Ladies and gentlemen, we're sorry to interrupt your program, but we've got breaking news. Today, your YouTuber extraordinaire managed to get himself stuck in a TV. Now, you might be wondering the following question. Is he gonna be alright? How did that happen? But more importantly, can it happen to you and could you be in the same situation? To answer those questions and understand what happened, we're gonna join our correspondent Philip directly from DaVinci Resolve. I can hear from the studio that he's ready and in place, so Philip, take it from here and tell us what happened. So we're gonna start in the edit page. I've got my timeline and my clip set up and I'm ready to go. First things first, I'm gonna need to bring the TV on top of everything. So let me grab that as an overlay. From there, the very next step, you guessed it, replace that footage. I could go in the fusion page and do some crazy stuff, but you know me, if I can get a shortcut and still get the same result, I might as well make my and your life easier. So let's select our clip and go into the color page. Within the color page, I will want to give myself as much space as I can around the TV. So let's remove the gallery here on the top left. Let's zoom in, make sure we've got as much space around the TV as we can. And then let's select the window selection here, that one. Free window, and now we're gonna start contouring that screen. Something to make sure we can remove it. Now, if you like to play with the curves, you can simply click, maintain the click, and start playing around with those curves. I do not want to complicate myself today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a selection like this. Time lapse. Now I've got everything selected, I'm gonna reset the view. I can check my selection with the highlight. This is great, I want the opposite. So now in my selection, I will make sure to trickle opposite. But because I will want to see through it, I will need the alpha output to be able to have this as transparent. So near the node, right click, add an alpha output. And then as usual, blue on blue, let's connect the two dots, remove the highlight, and now we can see my footage through it. That's already a big part of the work done here. Back into the edit page, select the footage, and now let's reduce it in size to kind of position it. I found that around a third of the size is just what I need. And then I can simply position it, but it's not perfect. If I zoom in, those border, they're a little bit harsh. There is not really that blend into it. I don't really have that kind of spillover of the color of the footage, if you want, right? Those TVs used to emit light and that light was reflected within the TV. You still see a little bit of that here on that blue. So to walk around that, let's select an overlay again, back to the edit page and make sure that that mask has a bit of softness around the outside to make sure that as we go outside, there is a little bit of a blur effect. And now if I'm coming, or maybe if I remove those power window here, and if I zoom in, you can see that it looks already way better, but it just looks like there is a gap and I'm seeing through. I'm missing that glass panel, that reflection we had. Here we can see that reflection. I'd like to bring it back. So here we're gonna have a quick and dirty hack, as always. I'm simply gonna select my footage, press Alt on Windows, Option on Mac, drag and drop to duplicate, go back into the color page, invert that selection to bring back the screen, go back in the edit page, and I know what you're thinking. All of this for nothing, but wait, this is where it gets interesting because now I'm gonna change my composite mode from normal to overlay if I can find it. Let's select overlay. And now if I'm zooming in, we can start to see that effect working way better. We can see the corner of the TV again. We can see that kind of spill. There might be a little bit of adjustment to do, but that gives you the main idea. And I've got those reflection back. Now to sell the effect a bit more, I'd like to bring a vignette effect. For that, I'm simply gonna go into my effect library here. I'm gonna search for vignette. I have it here. If you don't have it, make sure you into the open effects. And then I can simply drag and drop it into my original footage. Go into the inspector under effect, make sure to change the operating mode from basic to advanced, reduce the size to the minimum to really make the vignette effect as strong as we can. And as we can see, we are not really centered in front of the TV. So let's fix that with the center option here. Let's bring that back here more in the center of the TV. Let's play around a little bit to something that we find is appropriate. And once we have it, we can go further. If you want to get it this small, it's not just a question of going as low as you can. You can simply click on the value and keep dragging it even lower. That really allows me to center it. But once I have it, I'm gonna scale it back. And now the effect I have is already more realistic. If I zoom out from this, we will be able to see that it is indeed kind of legitimate in that clip, or as legitimate as we might believe it is. Now, this clip is completely flat, and that's great if it was a modern TV, but back in the day, they had a curve. So to bring that curve, we can simply look into a lens distortion. I've got one right here, but as you can see, I would need to have DaVinci Resolve Studio, which I haven't purchased. So everything I'm showing you here, you can do on the free version. So this is not an option we can explore. Now, I wouldn't bring it up if I didn't have a solution. So if you can't have it on the effect, you will have it in the Fusion page. Why is it free there and not on the other one? Question for the DaVinci people, but for us, user of the free version, we can simply right click on our clip, open in the Fusion page, press Shift Space to bring the tool selection, 
and here we can look for lens distortion. Select, add, we have it here. Go into the inspector, change the mode from undistort to distort because what we want to do is to apply a lens distortion. Open the model and here we can simply increase the distortion to something that looks a little bit more like a TV. Maybe a curve like this would work just fine. I can do a bit of back and forth to adjust it. But if I'm going back to my edit, now we can see this wrapping around and now the effect is 80% there. Watch the remaining 20% because we're really gonna go to the extra mile. Scan line. That's really the last things we need to really get that. Super simple. There is an effect called scan line. It's quite interesting that every effect we need just already exists. It's just a question of combining them together. A bit like I did in my previous video around the fire effect. But let's just drag this, drop it on our footage. And now we can see that it's a little bit too strong. So in the inspector, once more, let's open the scan line, simply clicking on it. Let's go into the blend mode in the global blend and reduce that to roughly 25%. What we want is to have that slight effect. We don't want it too strong, but it doesn't really work if they're not moving with the footage. So for that, we're gonna come here at the beginning. We're gonna put a keyframe around the line shift, bring it all the way back to minus one, go to a couple of seconds further, go all the way to plus one, go a couple of seconds further, go all the way back, back and forth. And then as I'm gonna play my clip, we're gonna see those line moving. And that's exactly what I want. But before you disappear, let me give you one last tip to really sell this. Because it's a static image, it's gonna be really boring for the viewer. So let's bring a bit of movement back. And I want to do this with some keyframe. But because you've got multiple layer, the best way to affect everything at once would be with an adjustment layer. So let's go back into our effect, take an adjustment clip, put that on top of everything here. And now we can see that when I change something in the adjustment clip, like for example, the zoom level, everything is impacted. Put a keyframe at the beginning, maybe on one, Let's go towards the end and now change it to maybe one and a half or one seven. And now as I play it, we're gonna slowly be zooming in along the way, making the footage more engaging. Now as a bonus point, if you want to change the audio to make it sound a little bit more like the radio, this time in the effect library from the audio effect, I'm gonna be looking for distortion. Simply drag and drop that into the audio track and it's gonna pop up here. And from the selection, we're gonna go from default all the way to lo-fi radio. I think that's the one that I like the most with that effect. Close this and we will have not that radio voice. And with this, that's everything you need to know to make your own TV effect. Let me know in the comment section below if you liked it, if there is another effect you'd like me to show you how to do, maybe some holograms or maybe something else. And on my side, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, ciao.